heads. Ah, tails. Tails. Ah, heads. Oh, hi. Hey, Mark here for Intel Future Skills, and I was just flipping coins because uh, I wanted to kind of see the chance of a heads versus a tails. And well, that brings me right to our project guide, which happens to be Game of Chance. Whoa, wouldn't you know? Anyway, Game of Chance is all about uh, understanding and starting to think about probability. And it's part of our hands-on quantum curriculum with Intel Future Skills and the Q12 initiative. And what we're doing with this is we're trying to get you to understand just a piece of quantum physics versus our Newtonian physics. Because quantum computers, which use quantum uh, probability and all these other things to actually make computations, well, they're coming on the scenes. Intel's actually building some right now, and we don't exactly know all the things that they're going to be able to do, but they're really different than our typical classical computer. So let's get into it. Um, see, probability chance is just something that comes down to, if I flip the coin, half the times it goes head, half the times it goes tails. There's another a way to look at it, which would be using something called a Pascal's triangle. And Pascal, back in the day, he had uh, the idea that if we drop something, well, it's half the time it's going to go left and half the time it's going to go right. A little ball riding down this plane here, half left, half right. And then the next row, half will go left, half will go right. But it starts to add up. And what happens is, well, you get something like this. This is a a little device here that gets to be used and it's called a, a Galton board. And there was another guy, if you build something cool, I guess you get to name it, named Galton. And what he did is he took all these little balls here and, and as you can see, this makes, well, a bell curve. And it's because every ball gets a chance to go left or right. And I can't predict where each ball will be but I can predict that every time it's going to form this type of distribution or called a binomial distribution or a bell curve. So we're gonna, we're gonna practice that today and then you get a chance to, to experiment, to tweak it, to make it your own. Once again, this is a hands-on curriculum. Um, walk on through the guide. If this is a bit longer than our normal one, but it's still the same thing. Dream it, draw it, build it, share it, expand it. If you wanna build a giant Galton board like you'll see in some science museums, do it someday. If you wanna build a teeny one like this one, that's fine too. But this is going to help you understand how quantum computers actually work in just a, a fraction of that and hopefully get you inspired for what quantum computers can do in the future. So. Let's start making our Galton board. We're going to use a Pascal triangle. Now you can make mathematically make your own Pascal triangle if you'd like to. Uh, we've given you a couple templates, one on an eight and a half by 11 and one on 11 by 17. Um, all of them you'll see have these numbers because every time the ball hits, it has a choice. Is it going to go left or right, left or right? This is all about precision, important, important. This is all about precision. You need to be precise when you build this. Now, you can use a piece of foam core, um, something solid, just bigger than the piece of paper. We've got popsicle sticks here. We've got some, um, some little uh, push pins. I really like these push pins because they hold it nice and steady. And then just something to, to adhere the popsicle stick to uh, where it wants to be because we're trying to make little slots here um, that these balls will be able to go into. So let's get going. You can use the uh, card stock. Now, if you don't have the uh, foam core and you just want to be more sustainable about things, our, your future skills box here is pretty amazing. It's, it's pretty awesome what it comes with, first of all, but uh, you just grab a piece of cardboard and you can stick your, uh, basically your whole thing in here and you can put your popsicle sticks. I like to put it right at the crease, put my popsicle sticks down to the bottom, and then I use this part here as what's going to be kind of my hopper or what's gonna get the balls or the beads into it. Now we've given you different size beads to experiment with to see what you like. Um, each template uses a different bead, but you can try, see what works, see what happens. So let's get building. This is a lot of push pins, so I'm gonna just uh, pause here for a second and you can watch it go real quick. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before we get going, actually, one quick thing. It's really important to put these push pins right in the center of the number. You just want it to be dialed in precise as much as you can. All right, now I'm actually going to leave my last row open here because I want my slots where these balls are going to, or beads are going to drop into, I want them open. So you can see I pinned down it from the very top corner, and I'm going to take this top one out here too because the top one's not really needed because what I need to do is make basically a V here that is going to allow. Um, all the balls to line up into the top of the lid here so that I can actually uh, kind of let them all funnel in. So let's do that. Okay, so I've done putting these popsicle sticks in and you could use uh, Play-Doh maybe and, and shove them into Play-Doh or some hard clay. You could uh, hot glue them, you know, with a little, with a hot glue gun, low temperature please, so you don't burn yourself. And then at the very end, we just need to put something down to keep all the, the balls actually in their tracks. So I'm just gonna basically tape down a little piece here on my box. You can do it you know, however you like to. This is gonna give me something I think that's gonna be able to be like a, a, a pivot, which would be kind of fun. So then I can dump out the balls, kind of like when I used to play Connect Four. And that's a, that's a fun game. I haven't played that for a while. So um, here is my catcher and then I need to put on a couple at the top. Now you saw me using these. These are these little uh, pins um, and what they do is they're just kind of a, a u-shaped pin. You could use those hot glue once again like I said. Uh, they're a bit challenging on the uh, cardboard. They're better on the foam core but if your thumbs are hard and you can do it. This took me about Oh, it took me about 10 minutes to build, so just as an estimate of time for you. Now I'm making my funnel. This funnel can be whatever shape you want. You see I'm kind of going a little wider just to avoid the lid here. And let me put this last one in on my lid. Okay. Now, you can see that I've got a spot here for my balls, and I, I've kind of made it where I can adjust these. I've got the top one there. I'm gonna scoot this one back just a little bit. And then we've got different size beads. I could try different beads. I've got some small ones. These aren't quite round, so maybe I'm not gonna try those right now, but you know, pick some beads. You could do this with the little dots on Legos. You could build a Galton board with any, uh, basically, balls of something that's going to, to be like Pascal Triangle as long as the math is correct in it. So, here we go. Let's take some, some balls and see what happens. And if you can see this here, come on over here, this has become a little Pascal triangle. You can see the, the binomial distribution here. Uh, it's not great because my, uh, my track isn't maybe as good as I'd want it to be, but, but you know, play around with this, test it. Maybe the, the spacing of this, you can see that my, my track down here is falling, the balls are falling out, and because of that, I'm just not getting as, as clean of a, of a binomial distribution or a bell curve as I would like. But you can tell that on this one here, when we flip it, when we flip this one, it always makes a really nice binomial distribution. Now, uh, probability in quantum, please look at the quantum tie-ins. You'll see that there's so many 
aspects of quantum physics that tie into quantum computing. So read about it, expand it, build your own board, build something bigger, build something crazy. And if you find something and you make something, you've gone through our steps and you want to share it with us, please, please send it to Intel Future Skills at intel.com. Until next time, keep making, learn some quantum. It's going to be crazy cool computing coming down the road. Until then, mark out. Bye-bye.